he also was very open to inventing new techniques, to inventing new ways to do, anything, to do things, new ways to present kimono. He was very concerned that kimono were, the kimono was going to become obsolete if people didn't integrate them somehow into their everyday life in some way. So um, this led to him doing um, a fashion show with kimono worn more like um, Western style coats, with um, belts that were not obi, with high heels, you know, on Western models. He was um, looking for ways to bring the kimono, keep it very traditional, and yet bring it into the 20th century. Historically, we have always seen some extraordinary output and pioneering, whether it be in fashion or art, from Japan. And this marriage between art and, and fashion coming from Japan, this is, this is not the first time we have seen this. Um, I, what, what I think is extraordinary about Kubota's work, that he almost has paved the way for such artistic collaborations as we see today with Takashi Murakami and Louis Vuitton. He had a theatrical sense in what he produced, in the way he presented it. Uh, and I think this appealed to, for example, actresses. I mean, there's a sense of drama, you know, around an actress. And I think that resonated with them because he, it, there was something dramatic about his work and very, it, it was outstanding. We met about 30 years ago. The best known actresses wore kimonos in Japan in those days. I first met Ichiku Kubota when I'd been invited to see the artist, a wonderful man and an expert at work on cloth. He was very rigorous when it came to cloth and its dyeing. He was a devil himself. A program called The Demon's Art was even created on TV. But in ordinary life, he was a kind and loving person, yet rigorous. Um, very few were analytical about what he was doing. Very few tried to put his work into any kind of context. Um, and I thought he was a really interesting example of what I would characterize as tradition and innovation. If you wore one of his kimono that he would, of course, specially make for you, um, you stood out. You know, you, you were very special in the room. The textile seemed so beautiful to me that I turned to him and asked, excuse me, could you make a kimono for us? And the master replied he'd make one that would fit me and invited me to his home. That was the beginning of our close acquaintance. I came with a friend to visit him. He lived quite far away from Tokyo. I was really very glad the meeting took place. Here is the kimono Kubota made especially for Mrs. Takeoka. One day, an interview she gave in a Japanese newspaper would transform the life of a young Japanese man. The article mentioned a kimono with cranes made by Mrs. Takeoka while she was being trained by Kubota. The young man asked her to introduce him to the master. I had just left my job at a hotel and was looking for a new one when I saw the newspaper article mentioning the master Ichiku Kubota. I decided I want to be trained by him at all costs. The workshop started at 8.30 but I arrived there at 8.10 and busied myself by tidying up for 20 minutes. And it continued like that for eight years. As for the work itself, at first we were not given brushes. For three years we did the so-called washing. Our job was to rinse the material. But the whole procedure was new to me, so the three years flew by in a jiffy. The master did not order us to observe and learn. It looked more like this. If you are able to memorize, do it. I think that is the secret. And I think none but the master would have been able to create this 
Tsujigahana technique based, as he wished, on the past and only adding a little part of himself. The master created the technology by making use of more than just patterns on cloth. He also integrated different methods, including oil painting.